Welcome to the Own It Powercast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, a place where you can come to get what you need to move yourself forward. Hi, it's Mary Baker and welcome to episode 39, Living Out Your Values. Okay, so last week we identified a list of values, gave you a worksheet where you could figure out what your top 10 were. If you haven't had a chance to do that, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that episode and do some of that work. I mean, feel free to listen to this one today, but it's going to be a lot easier, I think, if you already have that under your belt. Because this episode is about the real test. It's about are you living out your values? Okay, before you get anxious, let's just look at this episode as getting honest with ourselves and wherever you are is okay. Don't worry about it. Wherever you are, you can change. That's why we're doing this, right? So what do I mean by living them out? I mean, do they show up in your life? Like, if I were outside looking into your life, would I see you living out your values? Like, if you value truth, would that show up? If you value creativity, are you taking that art class that you always wanted to take? Are you taking time to play? If play is one of your new values that you added, Is discipline showing up in your life? Are boundaries showing up? And speaking of boundaries, I don't think we can truly live our values without being able to stand in our truth and say no. To say no to others, even when it's really, really difficult to do, it's going to require letting go, detaching from what other people think. That's a big one, right? Because there are other people out there who have a different set of values than you do. And they may not be happy when you stand in yours. They're not going to be happy if you say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I don't rob banks on Tuesdays, only Wednesdays. Not doing it with you on a Tuesday. You're going to have to say no to people who may be very convincing, who are really manipulative or charming and they suck you in. You may have to say no to relationships, no to certain jobs, no to activities, even when you're tempted. Like not taking out that new credit card when you said, I really am valuing financial responsibility and I can't do that, even though I would really, really like to go on vacation because I also value adventure and fun and downtime. Do you see where this can get tricky and this can get interesting? So... Boundaries matter. If you struggle with boundaries, continue to work on them and get some loving support around you as you do. I think they're going to work in tandem. The motivation and the drive to really want to be that person and honor that value is going to help you have courage and passion and the wherewithal to set the damn boundary to say no, because now you have a why behind it. Do you see the difference? You have a why. You have a reason. You have a reason to fortify you, to say, no, nope, I said no because, and that makes sense because, and I'm honoring myself because. I just think that's a really huge piece that you may or may not already be aware of. Living our values oftentimes means boundaries with ourselves, saying no to ourselves, being more disciplined, choosing being honest more than keeping that money you found on the sidewalk, choosing integrity over taking the easy road, taking the payoff, taking the handout, taking the dirty money, going further in a relationship that night than you feel comfortable with. There's a million ways we can go against ourselves, and I don't think I need to go into more of those. I think you get that. A big thing that keeps us from honoring our boundaries is fear. In the situations I just described, fear of being destitute, 
will make you take that money. There's some really big fears that are driving the bus. There's differentiation. You know, it can be lonely separating yourself from others all of a sudden and saying, I'm sorry, I'm not going to fly that way because it doesn't feel right to me anymore. You might lose friendships. You might lose relationships. People can lose marriages over this. Your kids may not talk to you. It takes courage. Something else has to be more important than your fear. And that is why I think values are so important because that's where we can go back to and say, wait a minute, what really matters to me and why? Where is my integrity? Am I willing to sacrifice that? Because it's hell getting it back. The other thing I think might be helpful is remember from last week we talked about, I want you to think about times where you were really proud of yourself and felt really good about a choice that you made and why. And then conversely, all the times you felt awful, bad about yourself, guilt and shame over something you did or even worse, something you didn't do when you could have to make a difference. So if you struggle with this, why do you think you struggle? Well, I think there are some reasons why this can really be a challenge of living out your values. The biggest reason is the fear of what others will think and what others have told you what they think you should do or shouldn't do when you were younger, when you were more impressionable or even older in life when you were manipulated, isolated or abused. You know, you took their word as gospel. You had to set aside who you really were to survive in that relationship. You know, one of the most common examples of this is sitting with people time and again who loved art, loved history, loved music, but mom and dad convinced them that they better go for the IT or the business degree or they'll starve. (laughs) So not that there isn't some truth in that. But they had to go against what they really valued and what really just lit them up and energized them in order to make money. The other reason along those lines of growing up, if you expressed what you thought and felt and needed and maybe your caregivers or your family members had a hard time allowing themselves to live out loud or to really embrace healthier values, it would have been hard for you to do so. Because here's the thing. If you make changes today, there's going to be some upheaval in your life more than likely, unless you were really damn lucky and already had people and relationships and situations in your life that match your new values. Mm. Sometimes that happens, but not often. You're going to have to be more comfortable setting limits with others boundary work, right? Especially if you're coming out of hiding with some of these values. People are like, okay, where did you get that from? You know, you're about to ruffle some feathers here. They're going to be confused. They're going to be anxious. They might be angry. They're going to be scared because a lot of times people, they don't want to lose you. And if you're believing in different values, that's a game changer in relationships. It's kind of hard to undo that. So you might need to change people, places, and things around you, right? That can be a really good thing and that can hurt. So grieving, letting go may be a part of this process. And it just comes with the territory. Setting limits with yourself, if you tend to self-sabotage, can be really difficult and a painstaking process. Be patient with your process. You know, if you want to be more organized, well, delaying gratification and saying no to the guy's poker night because you're trying to focus on being more financially responsible is going to suck. It's not going to be fun. Something else is more important than having fun on a Thursday night, you tell yourself, for now. And again, I want to add in here, you know, some things are circumstantial. You know, our values don't change, but the presence and importance of one over the other may change in the moment. As times change, as circumstances call for one value to be prioritized over another. Like, obviously, if your loved one has a broken leg and you got to take care of them, you may like a clean house, but that may not happen. 
And that's okay, because you valued caregiving and being there for them and focused on their well-being more than the laundry. Doesn't mean that being clean doesn't matter to you. It just means you're triaging and right now it's down on the list. So those are some of the reasons that it may be hard to live out your values. But right now I want to talk about why it's so wonderful, because it's both. And most things in life are a mixed bag, I think. The first one is you will feel so much more grounded and serene over time. Even happier, perhaps. I think even more motivated and inspired. I believe that. I watch that happen in people, and it's so cool. I've done this work myself, and I've seen that happen. And your life is going to hold so much more meaning, perhaps, than it did before. Maybe different meaning, maybe deeper meaning, maybe for the first time meaning. It's all good. We often feel a part of something greater than ourselves, which is really cool. I think that is a byproduct of the healing. We naturally, once we heal inside, we want to reach out and connect. We want to be more a part of. Rarely do I watch people heal and grow and want to go isolate. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't line up. They may take a sabbatical. They may take a a weekend to themselves at the beach or go on a retreat, but it's not about isolating. We isolate because we're hurting. When we're not hurting so much anymore, we want to reach out. We want to connect. We want to grow. We want to share. We want to experience. We want to enjoy other people more. We want to be a part of something greater. Along the same lines, You actually feel as if you're truly separate from others. I know that sounds kind of lofty, but what I mean by that is you are finally your own person, like really. You've really taken a hard look at that. And you've really thought about why. And it feels good. You'll probably be a lot less anxious and have a lot more purpose in your life. Stronger identity matters so much. I know it sounds crazy, but you're going to feel more defined. You might be a little anxious about risking being more defined, but that's a different kind of anxiety. That's the kind of anxiety where it's exciting, right? It's a little scary, but it's exciting. It's not debilitating, fighting yourself, panic attack anxiety. That's not what I'm talking about. I think we have that stuff when we're not in alignment with a separate identity. I think you will love and trust yourself so much more than you do today. You'll have greater confidence, no doubt. We make better decisions and it's easier to make them. Some of them become no-brainers. They're like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Or absolutely, I will do that, of course. That's like some of my neighbors. One of our neighbors had a house burn And two years ago, another neighbor, same happened to them, and we all reached out and helped them. Well, he stepped up and did that. First thing he did was set up a GoFundMe. I was like, wow, that is so cool. And he said, you guys helped me. Now we need to help them. He did that immediately. And I thought about that as I was working on this values material. I was like, wow, that really became a value of his because he was on the other end, the receiving end of compassion and caring and commitment. We stuck with them for a long time and helped them out. You will be able to sleep at night knowing you are no longer going against yourself. Guys, not perfectly, right? But just for the most part, feel good about what you can feel good about, by the way. Like if this is dredging up some areas where you're like, oh my God, I can't believe. Don't focus too much on that. You can't shame yourself into good behavior, remember? Try to focus on what you are doing well. That'll expand. It'll take care of itself. You know, hopefully these are good things, good values, by the way, that you can feel good about. I certainly hope you're not beating yourself up with some really harsh values. Hopefully there's a balance there that you might have responsibility, but my hope is you also have fun in there somewhere. Self-love, compassion, enjoyment. You know, this isn't about feeling dark and hopeless. It's about feeling hopeful and feeling on purpose, feeling energized, 
personal values are principles that define you as an individual. Ones such as honesty, reliability, and trust determine how you'll face the world and relate with others. But actually living out your values as hard as it can be raises your belief in yourself. It doesn't lower it. It brings meaning to your life and I think raises your self-esteem. There's a quote here by Wendy Hearn that I love and I'll read. and It's on your printout. It says, The way to know what holds the most meaning for you is to define your values. Values are the things that we're most naturally drawn to. Those things that we do without having to work through it or struggle with. Your values form the basis of how you approach life. And when you set your priorities in accordance with your values, there's less stress and pressure. When you define your values, you have something concrete to check in with when making decisions and setting priorities. When we live and work according to our values, it doesn't feel like hard work. It's much more fulfilling. I would suggest that if more people carried out work that was aligned with their values, this one thing would decrease stress greatly. I agree with you, Wendy. Wow. So here comes the hard part. Let's talk about living out your values for you. Now, in the bonus download, there is a worksheet with columns in it, identifying what your value is. The next one is, how would I live that out? What would that look like? And the third column is, okay, what's going to make that hard? So I want to go through some hypothetical situations here just to give you a sense of what this activity is supposed to be about. So let's say I start valuing personal growth and I start reading some books, going to some groups. I get a coach. I get a therapist couple of my friends I gravitate towards, they're doing the same thing. And so I really want to start making some changes in my life. I really want to prioritize working on myself. You know, I've got my list going of things I want to change. Well, what if my partner isn't aligned with me? They're not ready to look in the mirror. They're not ready to look at themselves. They want to stay right where they are. And actually, they're a little threatened by the work that I'm doing, which you and I both know there's reasons why they're scared. They know damn well that if you grow and get healthier, you may not want to be with them. You're going to outgrow them. So so there's the hard part. So living it out would be one thing I might write is I'm going to have to work on detaching with love from my partner's struggle with me growing and do it anyway. The second thing is I'm going to have to not run away from conflict anymore and I'm going to have to tell them, I'm sorry, but this is what I'm doing. And I'd love you to join me on this journey, but I have to respect that maybe you don't want to. So you might be working on not only personal growth value, but working on that courage one too, if you circled that one. So that would be an example of what would make that hard. If commitment was one that you chose and what that looks like for you. Let's say, okay, when I commit to something, I follow through and I don't sign up for shit that I can't follow through on. So if I sign up to do that volunteer thing, then I'm going to put it on my calendar and I'm going to, barring any illness or accident, show up and follow through and be there with a smile. Well, what's going to make that hard? Well, you know what's going to happen. You're going to get tested. You're going to get tested as to what boundaries do you have to set in your life to make room on Tuesday night to go do that volunteer effort? What do you have to say no to when all kinds of juicy offers come up to do something more fun and easier? You may be tired. You may wake up with a headache that day. Family members might paw at you and say, wait, where are you going? Aren't you going to be here for dinner? Who's making dinner? You know? You may just want to sit on the couch and veg. So those are the things that are going to make it hard, saying no to others and saying no to ourselves and saying, you know what? I committed. I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up. I'm going to follow through. I'm going to do it with joy. I'm not going to go with an attitude or resentment because you can do a little bit of that too. That's not okay, right? That's not their fault that 
you signed up for something maybe you weren't ready to do. So what's going to make that hard? I think we have to get honest with the perceived obstacles that make it hard in order to really be ready to start living out that value. So a couple things around that. Number one, if it were easy, you would have done it. So just know that. Don't be mad at yourself. Don't think less of yourself. You're just growing. Growth is hard. No pain, no gain sometimes. The other thing is, you're not going to do this perfectly. You're just going to aspire and you're going to keep at it and you're going to keep at it. Remember, here's the thing. Growth begets growth. As you step out there, identify a couple of values. And by the way, don't put 25 of these things on here. You may not list all of your top 10. I think that's a little overzealous. I would say pick three or five or whatever. You may only have one that you're working on and I don't care. If it's one that really matters to you, do that. Because as you experience and witness yourself living out what you value, you're going to feel so much more empowered to hit the next one on the list. Trust me. The other thing is, is remember we talked about how values work together? Like typically your list of values makes sense. They gel with each other, you know, that you're naturally going to migrate towards the next one that pops up for you. You're going to desire alignment. You're going to want that. And once you get a taste of that, you're not going to want to go against it. The process will unfold just as it should for you. And I also want you to focus on ones that you can see yourself at least attempting for the most part. Don't do ones you're not ready to do. You're supposed to do other ones that empower you to do the ones you're not ready to do. You've heard me say that. And finally, feel good about what you're doing here. And again, even if you've done this work before, life shows up. And every time we grow, new level, new devil, we will be challenged. So I I don't think values work is one and done. I think it's an ongoing process. We have certain times in our life where we do major upheavals as a result of some deep work. Absolutely. But I think that we expand and grow, we challenge ourselves more. So no matter where you are in this process, I think this is beneficial. Keep working at your list. Again, values work takes time. Work this in with your beliefs work as well so that you can have them gel together and feel really good about that. Okay, so today we got down into what it's like and what it'll be like to actually live out your values to bring your life into greater alignment with who you really are, because I believe that. I think it's who you really are underneath. Underneath all the fears, underneath all the lies you've told yourself, underneath all the people pleasing, underneath all the denial. So if you're already a subscriber and signed up for the Tribe News, you already have your worksheet. If not, go to ownitpowercast.com, sign up. It'll be there for you. And if you found this helpful, please continue to pass along the podcast. But let's make the tribe a little bit bigger because, again, the healthier the people around you are, the better off you are. All right. So thanks for being here with me today. Pay it forward. Keep focusing on you and see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you can begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now, so you can really own it later.